about this time of year that I start to ponder sowing seeds. I know a lot of people have already started, but there's no need to rush. It's the weather that decides. You need the right light, the warmth. It's been a long, cold and wet winter, but things are brightening up now. There's an anticipation about sowing seeds that never grows old. Every gardener still gets that moment of joy when that first green curl pokes up through the soil. And it's still amazing to think that it all begins with these. Everything about the future life of the plant is already there. A working blueprint, hidden, waiting, ready to be released. Every seed is unique, even the ones from the same variety that all produce something slightly different. Bigger fruit, darker flowers, taller plants, but they all need a bit of help too. They all need the right conditions to become the plants they are meant to be. These ones you can soak in water before you sow them. These ones need to be put in the fridge to convince them they've been through winter. These ones can just be scattered on the ground. And these ones, they need a nice warm heating mat to get them going. But the one thing that they all have in common is that they all have to die. Sounds a bit dramatic, I know, but in a way it's true. Each seed has one opportunity to begin its life, and once it's germinated, well, there's no going back, that's it. It has to give up being a seed to become a plant, and even then it's up against it. Most seeds need to be buried to germinate, some deeper than others, but most need to be in the ground, the earth, in the dark. It doesn't really sound like a nice place to be, does it? Being in the dark, cold and damp, waiting for something to happen, for life to kick in. I feel like that sometimes. Disappointed, disillusioned. I imagine that's how the disciples felt when Jesus died. No sign of life, no light, no sign of hope. And yet, and yet,
Welcome to Closer on this Maundy Thursday. Tonight we're going to spend a bit of time worshipping together and we're going to take the Lord's Supper together. So if you haven't already, you might want to grab a bit of bread and some juice. Though we're scattered all over the city and beyond, we are united as we join in celebrating the Lord's Supper. Tonight and during tomorrow's time of reflection, we're focusing on the darker side of Easter. Before the brightness of the resurrection, there was the horror of the cross. There was loss and burial. When Jesus predicted his own death, he used the the word picture of a buried seed. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat or seed falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is speaking about his own death, that through it he would bring life. But there is a point where the seed dies, when Jesus is in the tomb and everything just looks bleak. The life part has not yet begun to sprout. Dawn hasn't yet broken. And at the heart of Christianity, at the centre of the story here, there is a moment of brokenness still awaiting healing of death still awaiting resurrection. That moment, that the painful in-between is something that many of us will have experienced. We don't know how long it will last or how bad it will be. And when we feel that, and perhaps that is where you are this evening, right now, when we feel that, it's important to remember, firstly, that God himself experienced the dark of brokenness. He knows and is with us. But secondly, that there is yet hope because of Sunday, because Jesus did rise from the dead. And even now he's working good from bad. It's not a silver lining. It's not to say, don't worry, it will all work out. Brokenness is brokenness and there's no point pretending it's not. But we have to hold on to this. In a world where Jesus rose from the dead, brokenness is not the end of the story. Thursday, Friday and Saturday are days of the buried seed. They are a very real part of the story and doubtless a very real part of your story and of my story. We cannot leapfrog them. We can't live in denial or pretense. They are a real part of the story just not the end so let's take a moment as we come to worship now just to quiet ourselves and pray Jesus we come to you with honesty just as we are and we thank you Lord that that's all that you require of us and so we come with all the things that feel difficult, with all of our hopes and our dreams and our pains and our sorrows, we come to you. And we thank you that you are with us and that because of you, Jesus, there is hope. You are both our comfort and our hope. And we love you and we thank you and we welcome you. Increase your presence among us, in Jesus' name. Amen. To the cross I look to the cross I cling Of his sufferings I do drink Of his works I do sing For on him my Saviour With bruised and crushed Show that God is love And God is
whatever I can give it. Through Christ crucified out of death Call me into life
So we've come to the point in the evening when we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And as Dave mentioned earlier, though we are scattered, we are united through this meal. We focus tonight on this picture of the seed buried, that picture that Jesus used to describe his death, through which new life would come. And it's through his death and his resurrection that we are forgiven, the price has been paid for our debt, we can be reconciled with God. It's truly the case that through death, new life has come. But tonight is Maundy Thursday, and it's a time to consider the, the pain, the suffering, the anxiety, the fear. You see, the resurrection is still not in view. And so we can stop and we can reflect. Our God, the God that we worship, the God that we love, he came to earth in human form, in the person of Jesus. He entered our human frailty. He, he understands, in fact, one writer calls him the weeping savior. He gets the pain that we're in. Tonight, we're going to be uh, breaking bread. We're gonna take the bread, we're gonna take the juice. And, and we remember that our sins are forgiven, that, that uh, through Christ's death and resurrection, we, we have hope. But it's also a time to bring our vulnerability, to bring our pain, to bring our suffering to the Lord, knowing that he's with us, that he's with us. We're not alone. He's not aloof. He's not distant. He's with us. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to just reflect and you might want to confess your sin. It may be that that you've turned to other things for comfort, things that are not pleasing to God. I know I have at times and it may be that you want to just bring before the Lord the concerns you have, the unanswered questions, the grief, the challenge, the suffering. It may be you just want to weep, or it may be you just want to take this moment to just reflect on the fact that we are in a historical time of unprecedented events, and this is very sobering and very challenging to consider. But we bring it to the Lord knowing He's with us. So let's wait now just quietly for a few moments. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat this. This is my body given for you. After supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you came into the midst of our humanity, our suffering. You, you lived through circumstances that we live through. And Lord, in your death, you experienced excruciating pain. You took upon yourself our sin. And you are with us in our suffering. We are not alone. We thank you that in you, in your death, in your resurrection, we have hope. Amen. Amen. So let's share this, this figurative meal together. Debbie, the body of Christ broken for you. John, the body of Christ broken for you. There be the blood of Christ shed for you. John, the blood of Christ shed for you.
thank you for joining us this evening. We really would encourage you, if you'd like to, to sign up for the pilgrimage tomorrow in the Trent car park. And uh, you can do that using the link trentv.org forward slash Easter. And there's a whole load of other Easter events that you can find on there. And, you know, really, really would encourage you to come to that. You know, we we can't be together physically in the way that we love to be. Um, it's not as normal, but by coming to the car park, we, we can be in the same space. Uh, we can do this pilgrimage before the Lord in that space. So we really want to encourage you, if you can, to sign up. And if you can't come in person, all the reflections will be available online at that link. So we're going to finish with the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his dear Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all your loved ones, wherever they may be, tonight and for always.